You guys know I recently got back from my first solo trip to Curacao, second trip. About time, about time, about time, I'm finally recording my Curacao travel guide for you guys. You guys know I recently got back from my first solo trip to Curacao, second solo international trip. Of course, I wanna share my experience, let you guys know how much I paid for certain things, let you guys know my thoughts about certain places that I visited. So definitely stay tuned and keep on watching. I finally found the time to sit down and get this out for you guys, because a few of you guys told me, a few of my close friends actually told me they'll be visiting Curacao out in the near future near future meaning in a couple of months couple of weeks so that being said let's go ahead and get into my curacao travel guide and if you're new here and you're visiting curacao you're interested definitely stay tuned i hope you decide to subscribe and join the gang down below i hope that if you enjoyed this video you leave a thumbs up and also follow me on instagram and on tiktok to see more of my curacao content and my content outside of curacao of course okay without further ado let's go ahead and get into it really quickly if you're new and you want to know how I achieve this makeup look, definitely check out my everyday makeup routine. I might be here for the Curacao content, but I'm trying to make sure I lock you in for life. So make sure you guys check that video out. But yeah, let's get into it. Don't mind my balloons. It's currently still my birthday month. So those are coming down very soon. Let's jump into it. Again, if you haven't already watched my full Curacao travel vlog, I will link it up above and down below. A lot will make sense if you've already watched that vlog. So make sure you guys go ahead and check out that video. Okay, cool. I'm gonna start at the very top. I traveled in March to Curacao, and around that time it was roughly 80 degrees every single day, kind of overcast, but the sun did come out a lot. It was kind of peaking, it was playing hide and seek. So, let's start with Airbnb. I stayed in the Peter Maya vicinity and I stayed on Neurostrat. I actually booked an Airbnb and I felt very safe at this location. There were two pools on site and overall I loved the location because I was close to a lot of the places that I wanted to check out. When it came to restaurants and just sightseeing spots as well. I could literally walk to the Queens Bridge. I could walk to Plaza View, which is where a lot of local eats are. I could walk to a lot of different things from my Airbnb location. So if I were to return and I wanted to stay in that vicinity, I would definitely rebook go ahead and leave the Airbnb information down below and anything else that I decide to share if there are apps or anything like that I'll go ahead and link that down below as well for you guys or at least write the name so you guys can find it hopefully I know a lot of people that do travel to Curacao especially solo they decide to stay at hotels I felt 100% safe at my Airbnb. The host was very attentive. He responded right away. The most I probably waited for a response was maybe 20 minutes. He was always available. So I would highly recommend. And again, I did travel there solo and I felt 1000% safe. So yeah, being that I stayed in it at an Airbnb, I decided to rent a car because just like I'm sure you guys are doing your thorough research, I did my thorough research prior to traveling to Curacao. A lot of the people that I watched recommended that you rent a car if you were traveling to Curacao and really wanted to explore the island and see things. So I did decide to rent a car, being that I didn't stay at a hotel. I know a lot of hotels may have people that can pick you up for excursions and things of that sort. Personally, when I travel, I'm not a stay on the resort girl. Even if I did stay at a, at a resort, I would 99% of the time I would be off that resort because when I travel, I like to explore. So I did rent a car because I wanted the freedom to go out and explore things on my own time. When booking my Airbnb, there was also an option for me to rent a car, not directly on the Airbnb app, but my Airbnb host did have an actual website for the property. So on their website, I was able to rent a car with one of their partners. So upon arriving to Curacao, the person that I rented the car from came to pick me up at the airport. We then drove to Haddo Cave to inspect the car and pay for the car. And then I was able to go about my business and head to my Airbnb to drop my stuff off and do my do. If you watch the log, you know. And same, when it was time for me to return the car on the day of my departure, I met them again at Haddo Caves. They did the inspection of the car to make sure that no damages were left in the car by me. And then they drove me to the airport where I was able to leave Curacao and get back to my destination. If you are renting a car, I highly recommend this company as well even if you're not staying at the Airbnb that I stayed at you can go ahead and rent a car from this company the company is called rent a ride and it is a woman-owned business she is actually from Curacao and she was very nice as well so I'll go ahead and leave her whatsapp information down below and I'll also go ahead and leave the website of the Airbnb 
locations that I stayed at down below if you decide you don't want to rent or book rather through the Airbnb, Airbnb app. I also tried to go ahead and link the exact Airbnb using the Airbnb link if that makes sense. So let's get into the very first day, day one slash night one. I arrived in the evening so from here moving forward I just kind of want to share the price that I paid for certain restaurants and if I paid for parking for any places I want to really get into the prices and stuff. If you want to see like real behind the scenes again watch the vlog that's the whole purpose of the vlog but night one right after we got settled and stuff I decided I wanted to go and get something to eat so the first place that I checked out was soy 95 this place claimed to have Thai food but not your traditional Thai food it was more so tapas so small bites you were able to order a few different plates so overall I'd rate soy 95 I'd say a seven and a half I deduct points I deduct points really for the service pretty much the entire time that I was in Curacao I don't know if it's New York mentality where things have to just be very I don't want to say professional but you expect people to kind of just be observant I guess when being served or the waiters and waitresses to be observant I don't know I felt like I was like waiting a lot and I understand maybe I was on island time so I should have been a little bit more relaxed or a little bit more patient but I don't know I feel like I'm like can I have my check can I have my check can I have where's the drink coming that type of vibe so I feel like I deducted points for that but overall the food was okay it wasn't anything extraordinary it was different though it's not your traditional Thai food I'd say it's Thai with a curacao and twist kind of sort of it was good the food was good I'd rate the food like a solid seven and a half by a solid seven and a half I don't think it gets an eight a solid seven and a half at least the two things that I got but the drink 10 out of 10 all the drinks that I had in Curacao were crafted to perfection really good drinks my bill did come up to $63 I ordered three tapas or three small plates in addition to a drink so for the first two days I did eat at places that weren't as local so you'll see the prices will vary but just keep that in mind the first two days I ate at more touristy locations after leaving store 95 I did stop into Tiki Loco which is on the strip of my Airbnb there are a few different restaurants on the strip of my Airbnb but I decided to venture out and try different places that weren't on that block but I did stop by Tiki Loco after leaving store 95 to get another drink it's a very lively block and I just wanted to people watch and just see how the Dutch kind of like spent their nights if that makes sense because there are a lot of people from the Netherlands that vacationed in Curacao at the time that I visited and I think that they pretty much vacation there year round so I was able to just people watch that night so I did order a drink and that came up to $13 paid in USD you'll notice that I'm sharing the prices in USD because I didn't change any money at all when I went to Curacao I didn't need to they give you the option to pay in US dollars or NAFT, I believe that's what it's called. So it worked out perfectly fine for me. I did get some currency from the country, but I didn't need to transfer I didn't need to change exchange any money at all because I was able to pay with my cards with no problem or with cash dollars with no problem. So moving on to day two, we first stopped at Bliss the Berry, which is located at Mambo Beach slash Cabana Beach slash Mood Beach. These three beach clubs are all located at one place, so I list them all together. Bliss the Berry was one of the places that I really wanted to check out for breakfast slash brunch, but it was a really cute spot of anything with berries, so I really wanted to go check this place out and just bring my birthday in right by the water. So I really enjoyed Bliss the Berry. My total came up to $50, but keep in mind I ordered a wellness shot I ordered a mimosa I ordered two entrees yeah and I did order two entrees so $50 I don't think that's bad for Blissberry and this is a tourist location it's located right where there are luxury villas and at a hotel so it made sense why it cost that much I really enjoyed Blissberry I would definitely return then I went to Mambo beach just to lay out and chill and just vibe i personally didn't have to pay for any beach chairs or cabanas but i know others did say that they were paying like six dollars or ten dollars for the beach chairs but no one came by when i was at mambo i wasn't there for the entire day so that could have been why i maybe stayed for 30 minutes because I really wanted to check out other beaches nearby so I didn't have to pay, pay for any beach chairs but do bring cash in the event that they pull up like hey how do you plan to pay for this beach chair how do you plan to pay for this cabana <laughs> they are there they are available you might have to pay I just didn't have to pay it was my birthday so I wasn't trying to pay for anything I really didn't have to pay for okay no one came by to ask me so, so that was one less expense for me and just to note, Mambo Beach was maybe a 10 minute drive for me from my Airbnb. 
I then decided to drive to Yantheo because I wanted to check out their beaches. And at Yantheo, there was Papagayo Beach, there was Zest, and there was also Zanzibar, I believe. Same. At Yantheo, I did go to the Papagayo Beach Club or the Papagayo Pool. It was like an infinity pool. People were laid out. I'm sure you had to pay for the for the beach chairs I did not have to pay for the beach chairs but I was not there for long I was literally hopping all around Curacao especially on my birthday I was trying to maximize the day and if you guys saw the vlog you know I maximized the day my tail feather did not really sit down for long but just saying bring cash for the beach chairs because I'm sure someone will come by they just never came by at the time that I visited okay the only thing that I remember is that after when I left Zest slash Papagayo slash Zanzibar it was around 12 o'clock and that's when it really started to get busy a lot more people started to come so just keep that in mind I really hit I really started the day super early. I wanna say I arrived at Mood Beach or Mambo Beach at around eight o'clock. So if you're visiting and you really want to try to avoid the tourists or try to avoid the crowd, I definitely recommend getting there earlier. I forgot to mention that upon entering Yantil, there is a parking lot compared to at Mood Beach, there was a parking lot, but there were I didn't have to pay to enter. At least on the day that I entered, I didn't have to pay to enter. This was a Friday, my birthday was on a Friday, so I didn't have to pay to enter at um, Mood Beach or at Mambo Beach, but upon entering upon entering Yantheo, I did have to pay for parking. I wanna say I paid around four or six dollars, US dollars, to park, but you can re-enter. She did give me a little parking slip for re-entry if need be, I think, for the same day. So keep that in mind if you wanna leave and come back. And at Yantheo, I did get something to eat at the Zest Cafe. So they have the Zest Restaurant and Zest Cafe. Zest Cafe is more so on the beach. The restaurant is more so seated, and I think you have to like really be in clothes. Don't quote me, but when I ate at Zest Cafe, I was like right along the water, just you know, taking in the views and stuff and just chilling compared to the sit down restaurant that is right next to the Zest Cafe. The restaurant has more of an extensive menu compared to the cafe. Food came up to around $30. I did get like two appetizers, I did get two appetizers, well, an appetizer aside and a drink, 30 US dollars. To me personally, Yantheo seemed to be more of like a bougie area, so keep that in mind. But I did really enjoy it. I would actually return just to check out Zanzibar at night because it was so nice at Zanzibar. I don't think I captured much footage when I when I did go to the Zanzibar side because literally all three beach clubs are on the same property. You have Zanzibar, you have Zest, and you have Papagayo. So at the end, before I left, I did check out Zanzibar and it was so pretty. I think they have beach parties and stuff like that at Zanzibar. So pretty, definitely a different vibe uh, at Zanzibar or at Zanzibar, Zest, and Papagayo compared to Mood, um, Mambo, and Cabana, okay? <laughs> <laughs> once you travel, once you do your research, all of this will make more sense. Later on in the day, I did decide to drive to Otabanda to check out the Rift Fort. And that's where I had Ceviche 91. Oh my goodness, Ceviche was so good. I think I got the Ceviche Nakai, I believe so. And I also got a drink at that location as well. And I paid $42 for my meal. The views. 10 out of 10. I highly recommend checking out Rift Fort. It's a really cool area to check out, has some history as well, and you can really get a nice view of Willemstad from the other side from Alta Banda. The staff here was really nice. I felt like this was one of the places where I felt like the staff was really attentive. And they also sang me happy birthday, gave me a little happy birthday cake because I did visit on my birthday. I was just eating all over the place, literally. I was just hopping all around the uh, east end of the island and just trying a whole bunch of things. For dinner, I decided to go to Boca's, which is located the exact same place that Bliss the Berry was located. So on Mambo slash Mood slash um, Cabana Beach Club. And right downstairs, I believe that was Mambo was having a night party or like a beach party in the night. I didn't stay, but I could hear the music. It was giving more EDM with some not really R&B, but like some pop. Keep that in, so keep that in mind. If you're looking for nightlife, there is nightlife at Mambo, and I believe there's nightlife at Mood Beach as well. Again, all on the same location, all at the same location, and you can also get dinner there at Boca's. At Boca's, my meal came up to forty dollars. I got the a drink. I got the shrimp pasta. A lot of people were talking about Boca's, and they were speaking about this pasta. Pasta was okay, in my opinion. Um, if I were to chew, if I were to redo my birthday dinner location i probably would have went somewhere else but i'm not mad bocas was still good the pasta was good but it wasn't i feel like what y'all hyped it up to be 
<laughs> which I hyped it up to be. It was not that. It was just like a regular shrimp Alfredo. And it was labeled as like shrimp scampi, but it's definitely Alfredo. <laughs> so it was good, but it wasn't extraordinary. It wasn't out of this world. But I'm not saying to not check out Boca's because I know a lot of people do go there and do try other things. I just say maybe to try something else. <laughs> okay, don't go for the pasta. Try something else. Don't be like me. Listen to the hype. Try something else. I do also want to note that on that particular night, I didn't feel like driving because I didn't want to lose my parking spot on the strip of my Airbnb. So I did decide to take a taxi. You can order taxis on a particular app that was called 24 seven taxi carousel and it can let you know the price of the taxi. I believe I paid via card on the app for the taxi. So you can request the taxi, it picks you up and you can pay right on that app. Kind of like an Uber, but it's not Uber. There are no Ubers in Curacao. For almost all the taxis, you're gonna pay $20 or more. My trip from my Airbnb to Boca's was 20 US dollars and back was 20 US dollars. So this is why I say it's better for you to rent a car if you want to really like explore the island because the Ubers are gonna run you some money unless you're really splitting them with a group of people or unless you got the money, unless you got the means, that's perfectly fine too, okay? I saved a lot of money by renting a car versus Ubering or 24 seven taxi curacaoing my way through curacao. Yeah, just keep that in mind. There is an app that I recommend you get if you plan on ordering taxis or plan or, or you will need transportation, you can use that app. So on to day three, I started my day. I started my day doing underwater walking with Sea Trek. I booked this experience, this excursion on TripAdvisor. Highly recommend you guys download TripAdvisor if you're traveling anywhere in the country. You can even use TripAdvisor in your own state. Great way to explore different places. Great way to explore different places. So I booked this via TripAdvisor. No swimming experience required. For this experience, you have a, for this experience, you will need water shoes i actually didn't even realize that i could use my crocs because when i got there they were like do you have shoes and i said no and they gave me crocs even though i traveled in crocs i didn't realize i could use my crocs for this experience so if you have crocs you can bring them and wear them like the traditional crocs to walk underwater but no swimming is required so if you watch my vlog you know i was a little skeptical i'm like oh i don't know about this i'm not too sure about this because i didn't know how deep we would be in the water so you start on land and you walk down into the ocean to along the walk down into the ocean following a specific path to ensure that you're protecting the coral reef, right? I went with three very experienced, very knowledgeable guides that were all really cool. I was the only girl, I was the only black girl at that. And I went with two older couples. It was a great experience. I'm so happy that I went. I'm so happy that I challenged myself to the experience and I did it, I completed it. It was an amazing experience. I 10 out of 10. I 100% recommend this experience. However, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit anxious before starting the experience, but once I heard that we would only be walking 19 feet, we would only be 19 feet underwater, I felt a little bit better. Because I've definitely been in a pool that was 20 feet 20 feet deep before so I felt a little better about that if you watch my vlog I do recommend if you feel like you're gonna be too anxious to go in get some stress gummies from Ollie Ollie we could chat later but the stress gummies will help you tremendously they will help to calm you because they have ashwagandha and I think GABA so they will help to calm you I'll leave them linked down below they will definitely help to calm you down but if you're a bad gal if you're a G if you know you can handle this without any calming gummies or anything like that and the shout outs to you highly recommend like if you're in Curacao I highly recommend I highly recommend you do this experience okay and prior to visiting Curacao I really wanted to swim with the turtles but, and if you've done your research on Curacao, then you know there are a lot of turtles on the west end, I believe, of Curacao. But being that I was solo, I didn't really wanna drive the 40 minutes to and from just to look at the turtles, so I didn't. But if you are with people, I highly recommend doing it. If you're a person that doesn't really care about the drive, you wanna go and explore and do what you wanna do, then feel free to do so. But I did hear that the roads are lonely. They can get very dark. So if you do go and if you are solo, I highly recommend going in the day so that you're not like trying to find your way while it's dark at night, trying to get back to 
your your end of town if you're staying in like Willemstad like I was because you're on the opposite side of it is on the opposite side of the island so that's the only reason why I didn't go and swim with turtles and being that I didn't I wanted to make sure I got another underwater experience so I booked the Sea Trek underwater walking experience yes this experience was $135 Curacao guided underwater walking tour no swimming skills needed you hear that you don't need to know how to swim you don't need to be Nemo you're totally fine if you cannot swim I cannot swim and I was totally fine so you do get a helmet the helmet is does feel very heavy when you're above water but once you're underwater it feels totally fine you get three times the amount of oxygen as you normally would inside of the helmet so no need to worry you get plenty of oxygen you get so much oxygen that water cannot really come up in the helmet I also want to note that if you don't have water shoes when you arrive to sea trick they will provide you with water shoes or with like crocs that can fit your foot and they do also take pictures and video on a GoPro so I came prepared I did bring a waterproof phone case I don't have the waterproof waterproof phone case to show you guys in today's video because I did give it to one of the sea trek guides he was like sell me this phone case and I was like you could just have it don't worry about it I will link the phone codes the phone case down below it did do a good job at taking my videos underwater but I did also pay for my pictures and videos that were taken from the sea trek staff as well so being that I was by myself they only charged me $30 for the pictures and videos but if you go as a couple if you go as a pair they will charge the price I believe is $50 for the pictures and for the video so keep that in mind bring the cash I think they also take card um, at the beach so you can pay that way they don't offer that as an option to pay on the TripAdvisor website or the TripAdvisor app you do pay for the pictures and videos when you get there if you would like them okay so again highly recommend highly recommend 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 yeah that's the first thing that I did on my third day in Curacao then I wanted to check out some local food I really wanted to try the iguana because it's one of the dishes that a few Curacaoans do eat when speaking to some of the natives they told me not everyone eats it so I think that's why it's a bit harder to get it in the Willemstad area a few natives told me that it's easier to get it in the on the west side of the island where the turtles are so unfortunately I was not able to try any iguana but upon my next visit to Curacao I'm gonna make sure that I touched the West End but I was able to try some other local food at Plaza View which was pretty close to my Airbnb I definitely could have walked I'd say maybe it was a three minute drive definitely maybe like a 10 minute walk to Plaza View there are a few different vendors inside that you can order food from so the first day I decided to eat at Zeus de Plaza and I ordered the conch with the rice a drink and that came up to $17 they're also known for their pumpkin pancakes, but the minute that I arrived, they sold out, so I was super sad about that. So on my next trip, I'll be trying the pumpkin pancakes, but if you are there and they have them in stock, definitely give them a try, let me know how they taste, but I've heard really good things about it, okay? I've heard really good things. Definitely come back and let me know if you tried those pumpkin pancakes so others can know if they need to try the pumpkin pancakes. But they smelled really good. I was so sad when they told me that it sold out. But I only paid around $17 at um, Zeus de Plaza. I went back to Otabanda. This time I actually walked across the bridge compared to the day before when I drove. So walking across the bridge, trying to feel the bridge moving. I'm not gonna lie, I mentioned, mentioned in the vlog, if you get uneasy really quickly, keep that in mind. Um, it wasn't too crazy, but just keep that in mind. If you feel like you need to bring something to kind of keep you leveled, then definitely do so. But the bridge does move a little bit. I'd say it's maybe like a five minute walk maximum to cross the bridge from Willemstad to Otterbanda. You do have a water taxi. You can only get on the water taxi if they have to open the bridge, right? And that is if there's a ship that's gonna take a little while to cross. They'll allow you to get on that water taxi. It's not like a second option. The water taxi is not always going back and forth. It can only really board the water taxi if they're opening the bridge and it's gonna take a little time before they close, can close the bridge again. So in Otterbanda, I went to Kurahalana village where they have a bunch of different shops and they also have the slave museum the Kura Holanda Museum to enter the museum I paid 12 US dollars I wasn't really able to really take in everything at the museum because I had to kind of speed through it because I went towards the end 
because I went right as they were closing, the lady was kind enough to let me go in regardless of the fact. So I really had to kind of speed through it, but I highly recommend checking this museum out if you want to learn more about the history of the slaves, especially the Caribbean slave trade and stuff like that. After that, I did some more walking through Otabanda to check out some of the murals. And I also got some gelato in the village as well. There's only one gelato spot. I paid $4 for the gelato, really like a sorbet made from a fruit that is native to Curacao. I can't remember the name of the fruit, but if you watch the vlog, you know. For dinner that night, I really just wanted to stick with my local food and I decided to go to Pasawa. Pasawa was recommended to me by one of the guys that I met at Sea Trek. He actually led, one, led the experience. He was one of the workers that we actually went underwater with. So Pasawa can be described as like a big outdoor eating experience, right? They have a bunch of different food vendors. They have a big bar that you can sit at. If you watch my vlog, you saw the setup. Really, really nice. I opted for food at Funchi. There was where I was able to try the goat with the cornmeal fries, like the polenta cornmeal fries. That was really, really good. I also got a drink. My total ran me $26.86. Excuse me, goat for $26. New York could never. Curry goat could never, okay? This was definitely one of my favorite meals. So you can opt to sit and be served or you can go, or you can go to the eatery of your choice, order your food and find a seat and enjoy it there but I opted for service, of course, of course, of course, of course. I really like Pasawa, I would definitely return. On the last day, wah, wah, wah. on the last day I wanted to get breakfast and I really wanted to check out Central Pay Beach Club. It was literally a five minute walk, five or six minute walk from my Airbnb, but I did decide to drive because I needed to get gas and stuff like that before departing. So I drove to Central Pay Beach Club. I just parked on the street. I was totally fine. I didn't pay for parking anywhere except for at Yantheo. And I went right in to go and get breakfast. Central Pay Beach Club is so beautiful. Highly recommend checking this place out. I heard they have beach parties here as well. Fortunately, I did not attend any beach parties, but I did go and check it out for breakfast. And there is also another restaurant on site as well. I believe that you can get dinner. But the views at Saint-Tropez, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, it was the perfect place for me to go to on the last day, on my last day in Curacao. For breakfast, I ordered lox and avocado toast, something like that. And I also ordered a mimosa and that came up to $29. And then I wanted to go back to Plaza View because I really had my mind set on getting those pumpkin pancakes. But unfortunately, that vendor was not open that day. They were there, but they were like setting up for the next day. So I decided to go to MK, I believe it's called MK, that vendor, and I got the tripe soup. If you know, you know. If you don't know, maybe you'll find out if you go and try it. I know not everyone is open to like goat and tripe and all these other things. I'm Jamaican. Caribbean people will eat a lot of this, a lot, a lot of similar things. I tried the tripe soup. It was pretty good. I wasn't able to finish it because I really had to get back to my Airbnb and get out of there, check out, and then make my way to the airport. But it was really good. I also want to note that I did get a few souvenirs at the round market. I believe that's what it's called. It's literally a round market. You walk in a circle and there are different vendors. They're selling souvenirs. I again didn't exchange any money. I was able to pay with USD. I did request for them to give me money back in their currency just because I wanted to have some currency to bring home just for keepsake purposes. So I did get a few of my souvenirs at the round market but I also got some things in the Willemstad area. I posted it in the vlog but I went to this souvenir shop called Best of Curacao. I highly recommend you check this place out especially if you're unable to check out the distillery in Curacao where you can try Curacao, blue Curacao specifically. I just randomly stopped into Best of Curacao because I wanted a Curacao flag, Curacao bandana and in here they also had the blue Curacao, the tamarind Curacao, the pistachio Curacao and they allow you to taste each one if you'd like as well. So even though I was unable to make it to the distillery, I really wanted to but time did not allot. By the time I checked the website, they didn't have any more tickets for the day that I wanted to attend. So if you want that experience, definitely check out Best of Curacao. Tell them I sent you. They might not know who I am, but tell them I sent you. If you show them my face, they're probably like, oh yeah, I remember she came in here. Especially if you want to try 
the blue curacao and a few different flavors and you were unable to make it to the distillery in curacao you guys also heard that i did a lot of driving when i was in curacao so i recommend that if you plan on driving even if you don't plan on driving download the google maps or the apple maps i personally downloaded curacao's maps on apple maps but you can also download curacao's entire island map on Google Maps. The lady that I rented the car from also recommended that I download an app. The app was called maps.me and I literally use this as like my Apple Maps for directions. So whenever I needed to go somewhere, I put in my starting point and I put in my ending point and it gave me the exact route to get there. It told me the distance to the location and it also told me how long it would take to get me to the location. But I highly recommend downloading maps.me if you plan to drive around Curacao because your phone is not gonna help you on its own to get around, okay? Just keep that in mind. But that basically brings us to the end of my Curacao travel guide. I hope I was able to answer a lot of questions and give a more background information in regards to prices and stuff that you guys may have seen in my vlog. Again, if you haven't watched my Curacao travel vlog, I highly recommend you check it out. But overall, Curacao owes me nothing except for me seeing them turtles, but I will be back to see those turtles and try that iguana. I know not everyone is interested in stuff like that, but that's something that I really wanted to do while in Curacao and I didn't get to do both of those things. So when I return, I will definitely check those off the list. But other than that, Curacao owes me nothing. I felt 100% safe as a young black woman. And I recommend if you're looking for a place to travel as a solo female traveler, I recommend. I felt 100% safe at no point did I feel unsafe. From my Airbnb, staying at my Airbnb, to going out to eat at dinner by myself, to underwater walking by myself. I felt 100% safe, so I highly recommend. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, highly recommend dropping them down below in the comment section. I'll see if I can answer them based on my experience, but definitely drop them down below. I look forward to your questions. I did look forward to your comments. Let me know if you have a trip planned to Curacao in the near future. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, leave your girl a thumbs up down below. I hope after watching this video, you decide to subscribe as well and follow me on Instagram and on TikTok to see my other Curacao content. And until next time, thank you guys again so, so much for watching. I hope that if you are traveling to Curacao very soon, you have a safe and enjoyable trip. And until next time, I'll see you guys all later. Bye guys.